interested uh, in what you think your life was like before BookBo? Below average was my life before. Um, hopeless, maybe, would be a better word. But I remember my dad coming home and like flopping down on the couch and me running to him and taking his shoes off and him looking down on me, telling me, you know, work hard, go to school, like this is not the life, like, you know, you have to be better than me. And so um, that's what I always tried, so I knew working was important. Work, 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 work. I I've known nothing ever. It was waking up at 6 a.m. to go to one job, working eight, nine hour days, changing in the bathroom because I had another job. I was waiting tables at the time as well. So I was changing into my next job and uh, going to the job. I had, I think I had like 30 or 40, 40 minutes uh, to get to the next job, which is across town and then working for another five hours and then uh, home to sleep and just to do it again the next day, actually. That, that was a day in a life. I had like my 30 minute breaks were everything at the time uh, because I was going to another job. I, so reading was like my moment. And so I was reading, I would find an author and I would every single thing they've ever written. And I finally had found a community that um, were sharing like where signings were in my area. So when I started going to the signings, um, I couldn't afford both book and Kindle or I didn't want to ruin my signed book. So I decided, I was like, what can I do like to make this better? And so I found an iPad case and that didn't really work. And so I, I decided to like just make something I'm like, you know what, <laughs> I'm gonna do something for me that would make my life a little better and let me protect something that I hold dear. So I looked up local sewing places and I found a place in Dallas that was like, I think it was $80 and they had the sewing machine and you got to practice on it. So I took a two hour sewing class and I was in there with a bunch of moms. I was the only person that wasn't pregnant in that class. So yeah, I sat there and learned how to sew for two hours and went home and bought the same machine that they had so I wasn't confused at all. I bought a different bunch of different paddings to try to figure out what I wanted because I knew the key was protection. I didn't want something that just looked cool. I wanted something that genuinely like protected my books. And so um, Aaron called them like Mach 1, Mach 2, kind of like from Iron Man. And I think I was on like Mach 4 and I was like crying at the kitchen table because I still couldn't get it. And I was like so embarrassed because I feel like for the first time in my life I put real effort into something for myself and I was gonna fail again. So um, I went to sleep, watched another YouTube video, found someone that did something a little easier and I was like, I think I've got it. So I posted it on Instagram, my personal Instagram, and I was just like, I did a thing and I'm calling it a book quote. Like, I just was like, that's what it is. And um, a few of my friends who I'm still friends with now and I've been lucky enough to meet were like, this is genius. And that was all I needed to hear. I, I don't know why, but instinctively, I knew branding was really important. So before I even put anything out there, I was like, I need some kind of like a logo or like, um, so I reached out to my friend Chewy, who was um, a tattoo artist, and I was like, I kind of want this girl who's reading, um, but I don't want you to see her face. I want anyone to see themselves in this like picture of this book. And so he did something, and that was kind of like my first like Mach 1 label. Um, and I just found another person online who made labels, and we just went from there, Googled how to start an Etsy shop, watched a video, and I was just like, okay. And I also instinctively was like, I'm only gonna sell what I know I can make. So I decided to just like, oh, I'm gonna do like 10 and see how well it goes. And then they told their friends and I like sold out. And I got to spend that night like packing up orders and I did so much extra stuff that like looking at it now, I could never do again. Cause it was like so much, but I was like plastic wrap and card and tissue and stickers and like thank you notes personally to every single person that ever bought for me. And I think I did that for like my first 100 or 50 orders. like. A legit envelope was like, you know, thank you, like this is so cool. Um, and then it's just been crazy ever since. What does BookBo mean to you now? Um, everything, <laughs> really. It, it means everything because it's something that I have built from the ground up and it's important because there are 
more than just me attached to it now, you know, and I'm so grateful. Uh, you know, it's like I found, I found you. I'm able to give an opportunity to a longtime friend of mine who I wouldn't even be here today if it weren't for her and her family. So it means everything to me. When I started, I was just thankful to be like, to have a little bit of extra, to not really feel super worried. Um, and that was enough for me. Uh, now, what is our mission statement? It's been blank this entire time. Um, and until recently, um, I've been lucky enough to go and speak to children like me. So first time I go, it was kind of like a one-off thing. And I think it's kind of a lower income school. So I feel like sometimes they always have a lot of people that go in that's disinterested. They go because it's an obligation. So, you know, I go in and first few questions are kind of strange, uh, but the one thing was someone asked me to be their mom. And I know that sounds weird and sad, but I asked a question like that. And I didn't have a terrible mom, but I had a mom who struggled with a lot of stuff. And a mom who really wasn't there because she had to work multiple jobs. And I was watching my little brother. I wasn't outside playing, I was doing laundry, I was making dinner. I was comforting him when he was crying because mom wasn't home. Like, I'm already actually getting emotional about that. Um, so when they asked me, I was like, okay, like, this is what I'm doing. Like, this is, I immediately called you and was like, um, this is, this is why we're doing it, like right here. So I've been able to go back, which I feel really lucky. And so it was really cool because I went back. It's not like they only saw me one time. Like they saw me again for the first time someone else came back. And so um, actually when I get home, I'm donating 80 book bows to all the classes that I spoke to. And I'm hoping to reach out to publishers because the books deserve to go to the kids who don't ever get stuff. Cause I was one of those kids, so yeah. That is, where I see BookBo. Like I see it being the future of um, inspiring young people to get into reading because if I would have saw somebody like me when I was younger, it would have changed the course of my life.